Well, I remembered too. I got you your favorite food. Everything. Babe, you rock. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our favorite cartoon pairings who happen to fall for each other during their teen years. TV series adapted from movies won't be included, so Hiccup and Astrid, cute as they may be, are non-eligible for this list. Deal? Deal. Number 20, Casey Jones and April O'Neil, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This classic couple was aged down in the 2012 iteration of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which gives their interactions quite a bit more juvenility. Looking good, Red. Keep up all the hard work. Real funny, Jones. Now stop slacking off and help out. <laughs> Anything for you, Moan Cherry. It's Moan Cherry. I can help you, April. Casey becomes more rugged and immature on occasion, while April often attempts to be perfect to her detriment. With that said, the two definitely balance each other out, and the way they care for each other is made clear as the series progresses. I got him! You go! No! I got him! You go! While the brief love triangle between the two plus Donnie made us unsure who April would choose in the end, Casey ultimately did feel like her better match. Red? Oh, I miss a study session again? No, I'm just here to hang out. With the infamous Casey Jones? Unless you only like me for my trigonometry. Number 19, Beast Boy and Raven, Teen Titans Go. Oh, how we desperately wanted to see this outcome in 03. Although it took about a decade, we finally got there and Beast Boy and Raven have become an item. Beast Boy, you really put a lot of thought into this. I put all my thoughts in it for you, Ray. Only you. It's a clear-cut case of opposites attract, with Beast Boy's outgoing and joshing nature nicely contrasting Raven's more reserved demeanor. The turn of their relationship status was marked by a series of romantic attempts on Beast Boy's part, which, although somewhat misguided, certainly demonstrated his genuine intentions. Okay, this cuddly bear is too cute not to work. Is that a real bear cub? Yeah, because my love for Raven is real. Hey, Raven, I... No. While we do sometimes wish we could see a bit more gravitas in their relationship, they're cute all the same. Number 18, Jake Long and Rose, American Dragon, Jake Long. Jake, I don't care what you look like. I like you for who you are. What's under your skin is all that matters. Although it only lasted for two seasons, the way American Dragon developed its romance is rather strong. Instead of drawing it out too long, Jake and Rose's relationship blooms organically, and it's all the better for it. Fourth Street Library, say around six-ish. It's a date! I mean, study date. I mean, not even a date. A study adventure. A boring study adventure. But, but not totally boring. I'll be looking forward to it. While Jake is smitten with her right off the bat, Rose takes a little longer to get to know Jake and eventually reciprocates his feelings. I guess we really shouldn't hang out anymore. I'd love to, but it's just too dangerous. You're right. I... Did you just say you'd love to? Her job as the Hunts girl often kept her preoccupied, but in the end, it meant that she understood having a double life just as well as Jake, which was one more thing that bonded them. It nearly killed us when she lost her memory for that little while. Number 17, Nikki Wong and Jonesy Garcia, 16. Nikki, you're the only girl I want to go out with. So I'm asking you, will you go to the dance with me? <sighs> yes. Calling all friends to lovers. If ever you've been in a big friend group and fallen for someone in it, you'll probably relate to the complications these two face. From early on in the series, there's some flirting between Nikki and Jonesy, and bickering. Lots of bickering. There's one way to find out. Kung Fu Cop Partners is playing at the Gigantoplex in 10 minutes. Go to a movie with you? <laughs> in your dreams. Unless you're afraid to find out you're wrong. You know what? I'm gonna go to the movie with you just to see your face when that line comes up. Fine. Fine. After their first real date, however, Nikki realizes she doesn't want to throw off the balance of their friend group by getting into a romantic relationship with a friend. They get into a relationship anyway, but on their three-month anniversary, things come crashing down. This is gonna sound really lame, but I thought we kinda had something, I don't know, like, special between us. There is. I'm not saying forever, just for now. Okay? Okay. 
It takes a little bit of being apart, but the two do eventually get back together to the thrill of shippers everywhere. Number 16. Gwen Tennyson and Kevin Levin, Ben 10 Franchise Wow. Likewise. I got this for you. It's a corsage. It's beautiful. This is one of those couples you see coming from a mile away, mostly just because they're the two people the protagonist spends most of their time with. While they initially met at 11 years old, their romance didn't really bloom until later on in their teens. In the season finale of Alien Force, the two kissed on screen for the first time, and fans of the pairing rejoiced far and wide. I'm normal? Let me show you. Even with completely contrasting personalities, Gwen and Kevin work well together, and it was a real treat to see their relationship progress the way it did. Gwen! When we found you in all that ice... He's trying to say he really likes you. I know that already. Above all, it's those little moments that always get us. Number 15. Adrian Agreste and Marinette Dupin Cheng, Miraculous, Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. After a long and arduous five-season-long road, we've finally made it. You don't need to be like him. Just be yourself. Between secret identities and third-party love interests, it felt like Adrian and Marinette would never get together. I know what you're trying to do and it's not gonna work, milady. We're partners and friends. Wait, what's up with you? You have a new girlfriend or something? We always thought they would find out about each other's superhero aliases before sealing the deal, but in fact, the opposite happened. After the love square shifted from Ladybug and Adrian to Marinette and Cat Noir, things took yet one more turn and Adrian and Marinette were the couple who started dating. You're perfect, Adrian, as always. No, you are. No, you are. No, you are. No, you're perfect. No, you're perfect. No, you are perfect. No, you. While we expect some major drama for their relationship post season five, it's awesome to see them happy together. Number 14 Adora and Katra, She Ra and the Princesses of Power. No. I'm not leaving. Whatever happens, I am staying with you." From friends to enemies to lovers, these two have quite the relationship trajectory. Admittedly, we're cheating just a bit with this one since three years are supposed to have passed from the beginning of the series to the end, when Adora and Katra finally get together. There are some discrepancies with the character ages, but Adora has been confirmed to be 16 or 17 in season one, which puts her at around 19 to 20 by the series finale. We're hanging on to that 19 and rolling with it, okay? Sue us. So what is this, another Shadow Weaver mind trick? Either way, these two are great together and always have been. They needed to grow separately before being reunited, and we think that's what made their relationship stronger in the end. Adora! Please! You have to wake up! You can't give up. You have never given up on anything in your life. Not even on me. Number 13. Steven Universe and Connie Maheshwaran, Steven Universe Franchise You're here to have fun! You're so busy studying, you should get to be with your friends! You're my friend! We could sit and have some tater tots! Is there a teen couple more wholesome than this one? Steven and Connie are longtime best friends, though we do see little glimmers of potential romantic feelings surface every now and again. Their real love for one another, platonic or otherwise, is made clear pretty early on in the initial series when the two fuse to form Stevani. This comes right after Steven says fusing is difficult, and that was between two gems, forget a half-gem and a human. Steven. Connie! I... I did it! You did it? Wait. Ugh, this... No. This is... great! <laughs> The two don't actually really start acting on their feelings until Steven Universe's future, and it's not all smooth sailing either. But by the series finale, they found their way to each other. Bye, Connie. See you soon. Text me when you get to that bed and breakfast. Don't breakfast without me. You got it. Number 12. Sokka and Suki, Avatar The Last Airbender there are a few different relationships that transpire over the course of this show. As far as background relationships go, Sokka and Suki are everything. I'm so glad to see you, Sokka. I knew you'd come. They have that history from the beginning of the series, so it feels like major payoff when we get to see them reunite later on. It's cliche, but Suki makes Sokka a better person after their first meeting. Wait a second, there's no way a bunch of girls took us down. A bunch of girls, huh? The Unagi's gonna eat well tonight. And to be fair, Sokka's a model student. 
By the end of the series, when they officially couple up, they complement each other really well with matching strengths and are constantly seen darting to each other's aid. Oh, then maybe you recognize this. Sokka! It's you! Number 11. Claire Nunez and James Jim Lake Jr. Troll Hunters – Tales of Arcadia The life of a troll hunter is anything but simple, especially when said hunter is also freaking out over kissing his crush in a high school production of Romeo and Juliet. <sighs> really? Be it Jim's responsibilities as a troll hunter or Claire's time as Morgana's flesh bag, these two have to work extra hard to be together. I missed you. Injecting a degree of normalcy amid all the chaos that defines this universe, Jim and Claire share a pleasant rapport that comes across as comfortable and cozy. Jim and Claire are just one of those couples who cannot help but be adorable regardless of the situation. This world is so cruel. I can't believe it. Oh, there, there. Oh, he just cares a lot about utilities. Number 10. Zoe and Mike. Total drama. Love is difficult enough without throwing a sadistic reality show host and multiple personalities into the mix. Hi, fellas! However did you find me? Oh, uh, we got your text? For crying out loud! On a buddy guest, over. Total Drama's couples tend to burn bright and quick, but Mike and Zoe are an exception. Introduced in Revenge of the Island, these contestants instantly hit it off and make for a cute pairing while nailing the feeling of teenagers falling in love for the first time. And you! Uh, don't let Svetlana pull a hamstring! <laughs> I'm gonna go over there! The couple is tested time and time again by Chris McLean's high-stakes games and Mike's alternate personalities, which only make the moment these two finally overcome the odds all that more satisfying. Hey, where's the necklace I gave you? Number 9. Rayla and Callum – The Dragon Prince Originally drawn together out of necessity and duty, the human prince Callum and the elf assassin Rayla overcome a millennium of racial tension and the brink of all-out war en route to forming an enduring bond. Uh, uh, you're not who I thought. You're… you're one of those with the pointy… Oh, you don't like my ears. Putting aside some initial mistrust, Callum and Rayla grow closer throughout their adventures in Zadia as they learn more about each other and their respective cultures. I can't lose you like this. You mean too much to me. Callum, I... I... <gasps> After dropping hints in its sophomore year, the Dragon Prince uses Season 3 to explore Callum and Rayla as a romantic option, with the pairing more than living up to the build-up. You are so... Oh no, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I just got carried away. Next thing I knew, my, my lips were getting way ahead of me and- Shut up. What? Number 8. Luz Noceda and Amity Blight, The Owl House Are you trying to make me look bad? She's trying to help people. Hush, brat. Don't you talk to my girlfriend like that! While these two start out as enemies, or perhaps less like enemies and more like Amity's mean to people and Luce can't stand mean people, this dynamic doesn't last very long. Early on in the series, Amity is shown to be blushing up a storm, and it isn't long before Luce starts to look at her the same way. Their kiss will forever be iconic, not only for what it means for queer representation, but also because seemingly half the final season's budget went into its animation. I'm gonna take you out when this is all over, Amity, I promise. No monsters, no mysteries, no deadly duels. It's going to be the most mundane slice of life date ever. And it'll be awesome. I know. It's the perfect kiss scene for such an endearing couple. 10 on 10. No notes. Creator Dana Terrace must have a knack for creating those special moments because this one with Willow and Hunter also makes us swoon. Thanks for what you said back there. You mean a lot to me too. Oh, happy to help. Number 7. Daphne Blaine and Fred Jones, Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated After multiple decades of subtext, Daphne and Fred become a proper couple in a Scooby-Doo series in 2010. Well, looks like it's just us. All alone. 
Maybe we could go for a drive. Talk about that pretty locket I found. Wonder what it would be like to get such a romantic present. Opting for a mix of standalone episodes and serialized storytelling, Mystery Incorporated does a wonderful job of balancing humor, suspense, and character development, with Fred and Daphne's relationship serving as the perfect example. Daphne. Ugh. I wish I didn't care about her. I do. I care about Daphne. Fred's obliviousness to his own and Daphne's feelings serve as a constant source of comedy, but the show pays off their romantic tension in a big way. What are you doing? Daphne, will you ride shotgun with me forever? I... are you... oh, wow. Heartbreak, drama, and a few momentous confessions, Daphne and Fred were truly worth the wait, even if no couple could possibly hold a candle to Scooby and Shaggy's chemistry. Number 6. Candace Flynn and Jeremy Johnson, Phineas and Ferb. A thin line separates obsession and love. Oh, hey, Jeremy. It's Candace. Uh, just seeing what's going on today. Call me back if you want to. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Oh, man, that never gets easier. When not trying to catch Phineas and Ferb being Phineas and Ferb, Candace is either thinking about Jeremy, talking about Jeremy, or trying to get close to Jeremy. All of her insecurity about him goes in vain because, as it turns out, he feels the same way. They're beyond sweet together, with their distinct demeanors bringing out the best in each other. I wanted to tell you earlier, but then I saw you in front of your hotel with those kids and the girl with the ice cream. Candace, were you spying on me? No, no, it's, it's just that I saw you and it was like, it was like my teacher wearing a cowboy hat. I would hope my girlfriend would have a little trust in me. Jeremy. You said the G word! As Phineas and Ferb establishes these two as a couple quite early on, Candace and Jeremy mostly grow through their relationship rather than in pursuit of one. While many aspects of the show are heightened for comedic purposes, Candace and Jeremy's romance is surprisingly grounded. Hey, Candace, look. A shooting star, just for us. Number 5. Samantha Sam Manson and Danny Fenton. Danny Phantom. Cliché as it may be to see two close friends go down the dating route, these couples tend to be especially memorable as both characters are primarily explored as individuals rather than simply love interests. Nice jacket. It's not black, but it's yours, and that's enough for me. Whether inadvertently creating superheroes, protecting from ghosts, or trying to change Casper High School for the better, Danny and Sam's destinies are intertwined. Danny, are you okay? I think so. It's all a blur. I did some bad stuff, didn't I? Nothing you can't fix. While these teenagers are not made an official couple until Danny Phantom's final episode, by that point, Danny and Sam know each other inside out, with the two proving time and time again the lengths they're willing to go to for each other. This whole ride we've been on together, I wouldn't change it for the world. Not one bit. Me neither. I... Number 4. Star Butterfly and Marco Diaz – Star vs. the Forces of Evil These two waste little time in becoming best friends. Marco, 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 Marco. Ah. Shh. Ah. I've been watching you all night. You have feelings for your best friend, dude. What? No! Star pushes Marco to take risks, adding an element of danger to the teenager's life. Meanwhile, Marco helps to ensure Star doesn't get in over her head too frequently. Even before becoming a romantic couple, Star and Marco are inseparable, as the teenagers grow and develop through their adventures and relationship. Star and Marco cherish each other so much, one of the reasons they take so long to start dating is out of fear that such a step would hurt their friendship. In the way? Marco, why does it have to be bad? It is bad if you don't want it. Okay, can we kiss? Uh, please. Number 3. Katara and Aang, Avatar The Last Airbender With Team Avatar spending every waking moment trying not to be killed by the Fire Nation, Aang and Katara have more pressing matters to worry about than love. I need to ask you something. What? Please, come closer. What is it? Will you go penguin sledding with me? Or that should be the case, but the heart wants what the heart wants. What can we do? While 
while Aang falls quickly for the waterbender, Katara only officially reciprocates the Avatar's interest in the final episode, although Nickelodeon does throw out the occasional dance as a teaser of things to come. Compared to Sokka and Suki's more obvious attraction, Katara and Aang played the long game, as the teenagers bided their time until the dawn of an age that welcomed rather than destroyed love. Number 2. Starfire and Robin – Teen Titans One hails from an alien planet with widely different customs to Earth, while the other was mentored by Batman. Suffice it to say, Starfire and Robin have a hell of a time coming to grips with their emotions. Tamaranian powers are inclined by our emotions. So the way you feel affects your ability to fly. And right now I feel unfamiliar confusion. An impromptu wedding or crash landing on an alien planet is usually required for either of these teens to confront their feelings for one another. Although these moments tend to be pretty special. And I wish to ask permission to remain here where the people are most strange, but also most kind." Trouble in Tokyo finally made Starfire and Robin into an item, bringing closure to a storyline that saw two strangers become the closest of friends and, eventually, the most heroic of couples. Maybe I could be… maybe we could be… Robin? Starfire? Stop talking. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Kimberly and Kim Possible and Ronald Ron Stoppable – Kim Possible Kim and Ron are polar opposites, in the sense that they perfectly complement each other. Wait, that's not true. Ron did his best. It could have happened to anyone, right? Sure. Stuff happens when you're saving the world. See, Ron? Everything's gonna be A-OK. -okay. For three seasons, these childhood friends repeatedly save the world, share many a meal at Bueno Nacho, and express their love and appreciation for each other before romance even comes into the picture. Once so the drama made this pairing official, something incredible happened. Kim Possible came back for a final season and genuinely explored these two as a couple. Told your graduation wasn't the end of the world. Whether as a brave and heroic team, the most loyal of friends, or the coolest of couples, Kim and Ron are meant to be. Tonight, Garcon, we'll take the grown-up menu. Ron, this is really great, but do you have to wear the Smarty Mart vest? Which couple were you ecstatic to see get together? Let us know in the comments. Yellow Roses. How did you know? I'm a sensitive guy with an eye for what the ladies like. Really? No. Actually, Ben told me. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.